The gentleman from Vermont, Mr. Welch, is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I listened to uh, Congressman Biggs uh, lay out a number of issues that are in dispute. Uh, it reminds me of a saying that Mark Twain uh, presented. We all want to get the facts. Uh, what Mark Twain said was, get your facts first, then you can distort them as you wish. I'll remind my colleague, Mr. Biggs, that we made a request uh, in the House and it passed for an independent commission that would have as its job getting the facts. That was thwarted in the Senate. So if Mr. Biggs wants to get to the bottom uh, of that and then act on the facts as he wants, join us in supporting a 1-6 commission. But I think Mark Twain has it right. Get your facts first, and then you can distort them as you wish. I want to ask uh, uh, Director Ray a, a, a few questions. Director Ray, in addition to the questions about how the response, how to the insurrection occurred, uh, what the communication was, what the steps were uh, with information sharing, did the information that you had available to you indicate that there was a widespread dissemination of a theory that was advanced by uh, certain people, including the president, uh, that the election had been stolen? We, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Certainly, we were aware of um, chatter online uh, disputing uh, the election. Uh, and in fact, um, I think we built into some of the intelligence products we circulated about domestic violent extremism that we put out over the course of the period leading up to January 6th, warnings about the potential for violence, specifically partisan political right. violence, and, and, uh, and, the, the, and the possibility that that could be directed or targeted at law enforcement or government officials. Thank you. And Director Ray, uh, in your investigation, <clears throat> historically as well as in the moment, are you aware of any uh, large group gathering on the day of election certification other than on January 6th of 2021? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Other gatherings on t January 6th of 2021 or prior the, certifications? The, 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 the group that came here, I won't use the pejorative term mob, but they came here on January 6th, which was the day of election certification, correct? Uh, yes. And they were encouraged to do so by f former President Trump, correct? Well, I, I think they were encouraged by a variety of things, but I... But yes, a whole number of people were here, a very large number of people were here in the National Capital Region on January 6th. Yeah, it would be fair to say that was a culmination of many Americans uh, who believed, in fact, uh, that their rights and their votes had been disregarded. Was that consistent with the intelligence that you were, fami you were familiar with? Well, certainly there were lots of people who, who believed that, who felt that way, uh, and I'm sure that some of those people were among the people in the crowds uh, on January 6th. It's a little hard for me to characterize with a broad brush, you know, all those people and what motivated each of them. Um, but, I'm not, but ask, I, I take I'm not asking you to do that, but, you know, it's, it's it, in the, the effort that was made <clears throat> by the president uh, to promote this assertion that the election was stolen. Many people believed it. And it culminated with a, with a gathering on January 6. Uh, and then the finalization, was it 135 member, 139 members of Congress uh, voted against certifying the person who had been elected the, the President of the United States? Uh, you're familiar with the fact that that vote was taken, correct? Uh, yes, sir. All right, I'm just going to go to General. Uh, uh, Piat, for just a minute, there are a number of things. First of all, thank you for your testimony and thank you for your service. Uh, but I do want to just ask about some of the things that a lead that could have been done. Having a lead federal agency designated, uh, having an integrated security plan, having better information and intelligence sharing on criminal activities, 
and a pre-federalized uh, plan for the National Guard. Would that have been helpful if each of those had been in place? I think you may be mute. Who who was that question uh, General, asked to? General Piat. Who? Congressman, uh, this is General Piat. I apologize, Piatt. sir. That that would have been extremely helpful. Uh, that's what we did, sadly, after 6 January in the lead up for the security plan for the inauguration. We had a lead federal agency. We had an integrated plan. We had shared understanding of um, well, indicators and warnings, intelligence, and one lead federal agency. Okay, and then also that fence that went up the day after January 6th that is normally in place for the inauguration, had that gone up on January 5th, that obviously would have helped. We, sh we should have had those would measures the, in place well before 6th Would the January. gentleman yield to a question, Mr. The, Welch? The gentleman's time has expired, long expired. Uh, in the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20-hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it, according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white, military-looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black-on-white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals, no matter what color they are. When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th and they have to talk about things that divide us on, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong. But that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. Yeah. You know, you look at January 6th. Everybody has said it was a tragic day. It never should have yep. happened. They wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But, you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson. He looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes, and he was like something like 40 percent of the people were just let in by Capitol Police but they don't talk about any of that. And you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house, trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hypocrites on this. They did, they, last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, th th there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, th where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. And I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill.
Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings in cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that that January 6th is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. And I don't agree with it. And I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th. And they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people, right? And so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they, they have proven themselves to be uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So um, is white supremacy, is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most, uh, biggest threat to, to America? I think that's overblown. And I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day to day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure, it does in certain areas. But is the is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.